called a microphone because I have props. Um, I'm sure many of you are wondering why we have the president of the Magic Circle at the environmental conference. But I have a, a rather unique style of magic, as I like to call what I called environmental magic. And I thought I'd start with a, a quick demonstration. See, we all know that nature is amazing, and it's absolutely essential for, for all of us to survive. And nature, of course, is made up of lots of different species. So these ropes are going to represent all of the plants, this one, the animals, and this one, the insects. Now, nature is meant to be in a state of balance. Everything has its place and its role to play, which is why these ropes are equal. But of course, as we all know too well, there are a few things we humans do that cause some problems. And in fact, we are making nature really rather unbalanced, which means some species, they can grow in number. They may become more dominant. That isn't always a good thing, as it can have a knock-on effect on others. Others can start to shrink away, and if they shrink away completely, they can go extinct. And others aren't affected so much right now, but that doesn't mean to say that they won't be in the future. And that's why I use my magic to spread the word about some of these problems, but more importantly, about what everyone can do to help. Because there are things that everyone can do that d does make a difference. And maybe if we can spread the word enough and everyone works together, we may have a hope of restoring nature's balance. So all of our plants, all of our animals, and all of our insects are able to survive. Some amazing press out of it, and it, it's meant I've been able to get some 
really interesting places that I probably wouldn't have done otherwise. Uh, I also work part-time, do a lot of things, <laughs> uh, part-time in policy for the British Veterinary Association covering one health topic. So something I've worked on recently is the issue of small animal power synthesise, which I heard mentioned earlier, so flea and worm treatments in dogs and cats and how they're ending up in our environment. So who's the magic for? Well, I've mentioned schools. I do a lot for children. They're probably my favourite ones to perform for. Um, so these are some pictures from different shows I've done. The one in the middle, the, uh, sort of the darker one, that was from during the lockdown. I did some Zoom shows for goal guiding groups. I'm an ambassador for goal guiding in London and the South East region. So I, I got to reach out to lots of young people that way. And the, the one at the bottom, that was for a local, my local council. did a, a, a programme to try and encourage schools to be more environmentally friendly and me as kind of the, the fun thing to kickstart the project. But it's not just for kids. It does work for adults too. Hopefully you're, you've all enjoyed the few pieces I've done so far. Um, I've worked for some, uh, a few environmental organisations. This one was good fun. Uh, IIED, for example, they, they contacted me because they were launching a new strategy and the theme was make change happen. Perfect for a magician. So <laughs> it was great. Um, that is me with then Duchess Camilla. Uh, she, uh, that was at Clarence House. Uh, through being present at the Magic Circle, I was honoured to be invited there. And she asked me to perform, so I did, and she got an eco message. And that was about uh, coming out of a pandemic with a, a greener world. And that's me on stage at the Royal Festival Hall uh, in front of it was a conference uh, about, for women, and uh, I got to I got to open the show with a couple of kids as well, which was. Which Exciting. And it's just showing that I'm, I'm reaching audiences that maybe aren't expecting me to turn up and talk about climate change or, or protecting the planet, but that's what I do, so that's what they get. <laughs> but I'm going to focus on my school show because that is one I know the most. I can cover five key themes. I will say it's quite heavily focused on climate change because everything seems to link to that. But I can cover climate change, waste, species extinctions, ocean pollution and deforestation. It is a whistle-stop tour. I do keep it quite light touch, but it's all about engaging the kids and trying to get them to understand that there's something they can do. It's, it's about motivating people to, to, to want to do something. But it can also be quite scientific, so I'm going to give you my demonstration of global warming. And, uh, just, just got to grab a prop, because normally I'd have a different sort of table. This balloon represents the Earth's atmosphere. It's round and clear. Makes sense. And in my back pocket, I have a black hole. And this is going to represent greenhouse gases, such as carbon dioxide. Normally the kids shout them out. Carbon dioxide. <laughs> <laughs> now, we are pumping these gases into the atmosphere at an incredibly fast rate. A little bit like this. <laughs> and of course we do this when we burn fossil fuels such as coal, oil and gas in order to make electricity or to fuel our cars. There are other ways as well. Those are the main ones I focus on with kids. Oh yeah, <laughs> the next one is this needle. Now this needle is going to represent the sun's energy, which comes down to Earth through the atmosphere as light, in a straight line, just like this. It then gets reflected back off the Earth's surface as heat and goes back into the atmosphere. This is where the problems begin. Hopefully, not for us. <sighs> As the heat goes back into the atmosphere, if it gets trapped on the gases, it can't get out. And that means the atmosphere gets warmer. Now, of course, we do need some of those gases trapping some of the heat in, otherwise it gets way too cold to live down here. But we also need some of the heat to get out, otherwise it gets too hot. Quite simply, the more of those gases there are in the atmosphere, the more that heat gets trapped in, the hotter the Earth gets. And that, in short, is how we get global warming. Now, of course, there are some natural reasons we get changes in temperature. We still get our seasons as we go around the sun. And there are some natural changes in solar activity. And there are some natural reasons these gases end up in the atmosphere, such as from volcanoes. And some people will use these things to say, well, maybe global warming is not happening, or maybe it's not our fault. But the science is clear, and they are wrong. These changes are happening way too quickly to possibly be natural. And in fact, here's what I think of the argument that global warming isn't a problem. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and you'll be pleased to know 
but most, most kids do actually know what global warming is, which is always, always good to start off with. Um, I then generally follow that up with some uh, tricks talking about the, the issues that causes. So you, you can't talk about global warming and not produce fire. Um, and, and I talk about different weather effects, so I, I talk about unpredictability, hence the snow. Um, but I, I, generally in my show, I'm trying to focus on positives as much as possible, because it, it's the fun part of the magic. I'm trying to, to get the kids to think about what they can do. So this bag is about lights. I talk about saving energy, turning off the light, and so we're adding up every little bit of energy they save adds up, fills up the bag, and makes a big difference. But uh, I don't just do this for kids. Uh, so I also have a, a backup routine that I can do for other people, and here's one that you can all take part in. Oh, okay, it's a little bit on the side, but it'll work. So on here, as you can see, I have lots of different icons which represent things that you're probably aware are related to, to reducing our carbon footprint. We've got a, a light bulb, it's meant to be an energy saving light bulb, uh, thinking about energy saving appliances. We've got a jumper there reminding us to put on more layers instead of turning up the heating. There's a, a tap, because of course, Saving water can save energy too. A, a pound sign, because how we spend our money and where we invest it is massively important. You get the idea. Now, I'd like everyone to take part in this, make it as efficient as possible. If everyone can reach out their hands if you're about to switch off a light, please do take part, because it's a really rubbish trick if you don't. <laughs> okay. And I want you to point to any one of the icons on that screen. Uh, you're all going to be pointing to different ones. I don't want to know what you're pointing to. Everyone point to a different icon. Okay, now I want you to move to the nearest pink recycling sign. This of course represents waste because how we deal with our waste can make a big difference to, the, to global warming. Next, I want you to move to the nearest red footprint. And do make sure it's the nearest one to you, not someone else. The nearest red footprint. And the footprint of course represents that how we travel is important. Walking and cycling are, are the best ways to travel and of course public transport is, is great if you can't use that. Finally, I want you to move to the nearest white light switch. There you are. Let's be switching one off. And of course, this represents turning off lights and other devices. It's a great way to save energy at home. And now that you're all pointing to a light switch, I want you to imagine flicking it. And let's see what we can do. <laughs> So I'm hoping that reaction means most of you landed on that one. <laughs> and in slightly cheesy magic fashion, I'd like to point out that individually our actions didn't seem that significant, but when we all make the same positive choices, it can feel really rather magical. Okay. So, just in case you're wondering, well, results. Now, I, I haven't done any kind of scientific study on, on the impacts this is making. It's something I'd love to do, but I, I don't quite have the time at the moment, and it, it is just me doing this. But it has, the impacts I felt is, I've been able to reach so many people. I've had some brilliant feedback. People seem to enjoy the show, so tick that box at least. And I know that teachers, I, I've got a good relationship with the, the head teacher who gave the quote at the bottom there. I know that he, he, you know, he reminds the kids that have seen it about the, remember the balloon and the, and the ball going in. So it's something visual that teachers can remind children of as well. And I know adults remember it. One of the most important things this can do is, because it's so different, it means people are booking me to, to go into different spaces than they'd normally have. So sometimes at you know, a conference they don't want another speaker, they're booking someone who's a bit more fun, but it means I can, I can get in there with a message that they, they, weren't, other, they weren't otherwise bothered having in there. And I have been able to reach other people. I very, very, very nearly got to go to COP26, but the government, the number 10 couldn't work out what they wanted to do. So that was, uh, couldn't get them back together. Um, <laughs> so it has, it has had, I've, I've managed to get some amazing press out of it, and it's been, it's been really exciting. And even, oh, well, I'm not sure I'm meant to tell everyone, but I mean, as long as it doesn't end up on cutting room floor, I've even managed to get a uh, recycling trick in on QI, on the Christmas special. So that's, that's pretty exciting. So I've reached some really, some really interesting audiences, and I'm really excited by the, the potential that this could, this could have. Um, I think I need that. Yeah, uh, let's, rather than carry on, I have one more trick, just because we've got time. Uh, I've talked a lot, I've done, mostly I've focused on climate change, but I, I do say cover other issues as well. And one of the things that's, that's probably one of my most popular tricks I've pulled is talking about habitats and, and how we can make more space in nature. And I focus on the little things we can do, a lot of places I perform in urban areas, the things we can do at home in, in the space that we have to make more room for nature. And of course, here are three different things you can do. One, 
one is provide shelter and so this is a bird box, but it could be a, a, a bug hotel or a bat box, a log pile. We can create homes and shelters for, for our amazing wildlife. Water, of course, is essential. Having ponds is great if people can have ponds, but even if they can't, even just providing water for, for animals and insects and to drink. So even just a small pot of water on the windowsill could, could help a thirsty bee to survive. I like to remind everyone, especially if they're living in the city. But most importantly, probably, are the flowers. Flowers can be grown in so many places. There are 250,000 miles of road roads in the UK. How much better would they be if we grew wildflowers on them instead of boring our grass? We can make so much more space. And to give us an idea of the space we can make in nature, on the back of this is a picture of my greenhouse. So I've got a green roof, I've got a wisteria growing up walls and long grass, I've got window boxes full of wildflowers, like around the back is a meadow and a pond and trees and all the things I couldn't be bothered to draw. Just there. <laughs> there are so many things we can do to make space for nature and wildlife. And if we only remember one thing, it's to grow flowers. They're so pretty and so amazing. And to help you remember, oh, <laughs> Help us all remember that. Give us some that I grew earlier.
Um, well, to keep the magic alive as people get older. I think changing, changing the way you deliver the message is really important. So magic is one tool, but you know, not everyone loves magic. It's not everyone is, is going to listen to this. Lots of people do. I don't know why people don't. But um, I think, yeah, changing the way you deliver the message is, is a really good way to, to get it across and, and to find another angle to come in. At. Some people, if people are motivated by money, then maybe point out the economic benefits of looking after nature. If people are motivated by their health, then point out the health benefits. You know, the different, we, we know there are so many different reasons to care for nature. There's so many different angles you can come from. I think that's what I would, I would argue. Just come at, come at it from a different, a different way, a different point of view. Does anyone else got any questions? How many like, children do you, do you think you inspired to actually like start working on uh, conservation as well when you make jokes? How many children? Oh, I have no idea how many have started working on it. Like, 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 <laughs> so so many yeah, so many do like I, I know they get engaged, I know they all commit to doing something. And actually on my Zoom show I, I make them all make a pledge and tell them all to go away and do something as well. So I actually get them to write it down and then read their mind. Um so <laughs> There, no, I, I wouldn't know how many are actually doing something, and I would hope that it is inspiring many. One, one thing I do find is slightly frustrating is the schools that do book me tend to be the ones that are already engaged in it, which is lovely for me because the kids know the answers, and you know they're not all correct. I get some, I get some brilliant responses. Say my favourite, oh, say favourite. One response to saving energy was, "How can we save energy? Sit down whilst watching the TV." <laughs> So at least I've corrected that one. <laughs> and you'd be amazed by how many people think you can save water by buying it from the shops. <laughs> so at least I'm, I'm correcting a few of these, these things. But yeah, it, it would be really hard to quantify. I've performed for thousands of children now. But it's, yeah, hope, hopefully they're all a little bit more inspired than they were when I started. <laughs> Have another one? Uh, got it, well, um, so obviously, um, we're not so passionate about something you hit a lot of brick walls. What would be your advice to somebody who's passionate about Do it. <laughs> Just keep going. I, yeah, I hit brick walls. I, I mean, I, I still sometimes think, how, how have I ended up doing this? Like it's so different, and no, no one else really does what I do. And, and that's true of so many things I do in magic. I, mean, I don't know if anyone knows about magicians, but there's only about five percent of. 5% of the magic circle are actually women, so even you know, just being a magician is a bit weird for me. Um, yeah, just I just don't let it put me off if I love doing something, I've always just done it, and I think that's something that's been built in. It's hard to, it's hard to say how, you just have to be resilient and, and keep trying. If you really love it, you'll, you'll get there in the end, and maybe find other ways to do what you love and, and put it into different things. With the magic, I've, just, I've always put it into my presentations, it's in my, my uni presentations, it was in everything I've done at school, it's... You know, I do it at work, whether they like it or not. So, it's, <laughs> you know, you just you just keep going and, and find. I'm I'm really lucky to have found a workplace that's supportive of it, and I'm proud to have the president of the Magic Circle working for them. So, but you know, if they weren't, I, I wouldn't have worked there. They found somewhere else to go. <laughs> <laughs>